Hello, this is MicroJoy101, and sorry I've not made a video for a while. Um, things have just been a little bit crazy, and I've been a little bit lazy, so yeah, crazy and lazy doesn't work. But anyway, so um, yeah, I haven't made any videos lately. I've made a couple videos, but I haven't uploaded them, so uh, I took apart a um, very old network analyzer the other day, and uh, so I've not made it. I made a video of it, but I haven't done anything yet, so. Um, but yeah, I've been down at Hack Pittsburgh a lot lately. And uh, so yeah, in this video I'll just show you some of the things I've been working on lately. Um, some of them I can't show you though because they're actually Christmas presents for my family. So um, before we get started I'll just wish you guys all a Merry Christmas. So I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, so if I don't get to make another video here in the next couple days. But um, yeah, so I finished uh, my fall semester and now I am uh, scheduled my, my classes for the spring semester. Um, and I'm still at community college, but, uh, so hopefully the spring semester will be a little bit more productive than the fall semester, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so, but, um, so I still passed, um, got A, two A's and a B, I think, yeah, wait, no, three, three A's and a B, I don't remember, something like that, but, uh, yeah, so I did pretty good, but, um, so, yeah, um, but yeah, we'll just go over a couple things in, or a couple different projects I've been working on lately. A um, couple of uh, sneak peeks and such for the internal combustion engine, and a couple other things. So, uh, yep. Um, so we'll start off the internal combustion engine, because I'm sure a lot of you want to see that. But uh, here's the f uh, state it is, it is in right now. I have not actually run it in probably two weeks or so. Um, but uh, here is... A new flywheel I cast for it. This is cast out of aluminum. I basically carved it out of styrofoam, um, high density styrofoam, on the CNC mill at Hack Pittsburgh. And so I got a nice, uh, so I took two halves so that I could insert a picture here. But I'm going to have a whole video on that, I think, if it turns out. I did cast this when it was dark out, so I don't know if it's really going to turn out. But we'll see how that goes. Um, again, I I took the video footage, but I did not do any editing yet, or even look at the files yet, so uh, I need to do that. I need to catch up on editing here. I've just been kind of lazy. Um, a water pump. So, again, this so this was made with a machine shop. You can see I turned that on the lathe, um, and I used the CNC mill. There's a little pulley here I machined, and uh, then this is a little water pump that I made, again, without a machine shop, though. Um, so I probably will have a video on that. I took video footage of while I was making it, some video footage. I think it's incomplete though, so I might have to paste some things in there and such, but yeah, that often happens. I just kind of get carried away with the project, and yeah, it's just, I don't know if, it's kind of, probably kind of hard to understand for you guys, but it's just often hard for me to make a video of the whole project. Just, I don't know, it just, I don't know, I just kind of get up, carried away and I forget to make footage and such. There's a water jacket on there. It's a, actually a, it actually slides off. It's a three quarter inch uh, connector so it's a little bit bigger and it slides on there and then here is the piston for those of you who want to see that the actual piston what it looks like which is uh, JB Weld and then there's the uh, o-ring on there which is Viton on this one and this is the old piston the new one is I actually have a new one in there because this one actually started to crack you can see on this side the um, Conrod, I guess you could call it. Although it's not really a conrod in this design. It's there's a crack right there starting to grow, and also it's got a big old hole there, because actually the conrod cracked right in half, and uh, it was just kind of wiggling around in there. So I decided to make a new one, and uh, there's a new one in the engine right now. But uh, yep, still using the same ignition system. Although I did buy a um, ignition coil for four dollars from a scrapyard. As you can see, it's a little bit rusty. I wish I would have gotten it for, for a little cheaper, but four dollars is not bad. Um, it's probably about it's probably close to scrap value actually at four dollars, so that's pretty good. Um, so pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, that's update on internal combustion. I'm I'm planning to use a um, Hall effect sensor and a MOSFET to trigger the ignition coil. So I'll have a magnet on here that triggers the Hall effect sensor, and hopefully. It will be able to run off of 12 volts or something like that, and I can run it off of the generator then and have the engine uh, self-sustaining instead of running off of 120 volts. Which still, it was powering, it, it could have powered the uh, this power supply because this actually is 24 volts, but um, it's kind of, I don't know, I mean, you have to be connected to an outlet. Um, so what else? I just, the other day, I took apart a um, very old HP network analyzer, and it was 
pretty awesome inside. So here's some of the parts of it. Um, here, here you can see the transformer, which is lovely. I like that transformer on there. And um, that's the high voltage board for it. Here is the high voltage tube. And uh, you can see the camera's not focusing there. But yeah, it's pretty lovely. I like that a lot. So, very nice tube. And then here's some of the rotary switches and such to change different things. And it was in the gigahertz, so... And I tried to get it working, but I don't think I... It used some sort of a preparatory, that whatever you say, uh, plug. And uh, I have no idea how to work that, so... Took it apart. It was pretty awesome side. There was a whole bunch of gold plated circuit boards too. I already put those in my scrap bin, but uh, pretty awesome. This is actually something I picked up at Hack Pittsburgh. I'm not actually sure what it is. I'm guessing it's some sort of an old uh, front panel to something, but it has these really nice little LED modules up here. And you can see it's pretty awesome. Let me turn on the power supply here. Look at that. Here, I'm going to get my um, macro. Well, actually, I'll show you what I bought for my camera. So I got a camera bag, and then so this is for the Sony Alpha. So I got a, uh, what is this lens? Uh, 210 to 55 millimeter lens. And uh, then I got these real cheapo, I think they were $10, um, extension tubes. And I'll put those on right now. But an extension tube, basically, just you put it between the lens and the camera. And it basically makes it so that it's super macro. It's pretty awesome. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the uh, little LED display and super macro. Oh yeah, the other day I was just also uh, fixing Christmas light strings. That was fun. Basically the one string, the whole like string was bad. And these are all bad bulbs. That was really a pain. But yeah, favorite for hard Christmas. No, just kidding. But yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Um, here's all the hardware from that network analyzer. Yeah, so I'll show you that here in a second. All right, you can see here's that LED module, and look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. It's awesome. And this is just with the uh, smallest uh, extension tube, actually. If I put the larger, this is the largest, the, the thickest extension tube I can actually put on this lens, but I will actually try it with my other lens, which you can actually get even more macro with the uh, 210 to 55 millimeter uh, telephoto lens instead of the stock lens. So let me do that for a second here and you can see what it looks like then. But yeah, this is about the max macro you get here. You can see there's nice little LED modules in there, or LED chips. And uh, yeah. Also the focus is not, not always the best. You have to get in a real small range here in order for it to actually focus. But that's kind of the side, the uh, side effect of using a extension tube. Alright, so here's my telephoto lens using both um, extension rings. So there's a 10mm and a 16mm extension ring and I'm using both. But you can see it gets pretty darn close macro there. And you can see the part number on the back of that. Which I actually tried to look that up, but I think the chip is too old to even find that anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not going to be on the internet. But it's a pretty cool little module there. And then you get the circuit board here and you can look at some of the traces on there if you want to. Pretty cool though. Here's that, here's that high voltage transformer. Little flyback transformer from the. Uh, which is not actually in focus now. I have to use the zoom lens to actually focus it. And then the camera does the fine focusing, but. Yeah. You can see some nice high voltage diodes there. This is HP. So, pretty cool. So, I'm not really sure what the practical use of the telephoto or the um, extension tubes really are except for getting cool macro shots but because uh, it's a little bit finicky and you can't leave them on all the time or anything like that but yeah, you can see this LEDs on there they're kind of cool so but yeah here's a uh, little operate module for uh, meter I keep saying module I don't know why but it's a little cool meter so another thing I bought for my camera recently was a couple of really cheapo uh, UV filters for all my lenses and, uh, well, only two lenses, but, um, so basically all these do is, I mean, they do filter out UV light, apparently, but, I mean, all the lenses will do the same thing, but, um, because glass, UV doesn't really go through glass very well, but, uh, so I bought a couple of those, and, uh, what they, I just screw them on my lenses, leave them on there all the time, and they protect the lenses from dust and, uh, scratches and such like that, so I would break one of these instead of my expensive lenses, so, but yeah, it's a good idea to put on your expensive cameras if you're, uh, doing videos like I do where you might get stuff splattered on it or 
etc etc and yeah you don't want to ruin your expensive lenses but that's about it guys thanks for watching and keep experimenting and merry christmas